Welcome to the channel folks, my name's Shane. In today's video we're checking out the WeLight WP35 full color RGB LED light. Not only can this light cover the full RGB spectrum, it's also great as a fill light, key light, hair light, background light, or effects light for small filmmaking projects. This is a perfect addition to any YouTube studio if you want to ditch those space hungry soft boxes. I recently upgraded my studios in the house to RGB panels due to their small size, excellent features, and ease of use. This video will cover everything you need to know about these lights and how they work in a studio environment exactly like this. At $129, these are a feature-rich RGB light and perform great in various setups and configurations. The LED power is 30 watts with 3200 lumens of brightness and also comes with 648 LEDs. 30 watts of power and 3200 lumens means this might not be as bright as my Pixel P80, for example, which is rated at 4811 lumens, but it's also $100 cheaper, making it a great option if you buy a pair and then you'll be decked out in the studio. This light can be fully controlled using the free app for your smartphone called the WeLight Pro or via the controls on the back of the light. We'll cover all of the different modes in just a moment. Before we get into it, a huge thank you to Viltrox for sending this light out for the review. I really appreciate it. If you want to check it out, I'll leave an affiliate link down in the description below. While I do this talking headshot, I've currently got it on RGB cycle mode as a background light. Later in the video, we'll replace my main light in the studio so you can get a sense of how it operates. Let's talk about what we get in the box. We get a power adapter, manual, and the WP35 LED light. Now, the Wii light can run off AC power or battery thanks to the included power supply, but the power supply is with a US plug only, and I had to buy my own plug converter. Not the end of the world, but definitely worth mentioning. If you live in Australia, I'll link down to the converter plug that I purchased in the description. Thanks to the battery compartments on the rear of the light, we can also run the LED panel off two Sony MPF batteries. These are basically the industry standard when you're talking about lighting. You can easily just click the batteries into place on the back panel. To release the batteries, press and hold the green button and you're good to go. Plan on using this light handheld. You can buy an additional handle off the Viltrox website if you plan on doing any type of run and gun filmmaking. The build quality of the LED is solid. The light is a good mix of metal and hardened plastic. The attachment for the light stand feels good and I have no complaints when it comes to the build quality. There's also some ventilation on the back of the light, allowing it to keep cool under long extended shooting scenarios. The barn doors feel great and they easily allow you to control the light and light direction by angling them appropriately. Thankfully, we get built in diffusion. Some LED lights don't come with diffusion, or if they do, they're forever falling out, like my GVM light. It drives me crazy. Diffusion is essential anytime you're talking about an LED panel. The softer the light is, the better the end result will be, and having diffusion built in is awesome. Let's take a look at how the Wii Light LED panel works. To turn the light on, hold the button on the back, and it will power on. Once the light is powered on, you can then turn it on and off using the app or hardware key on the back. The WP35 has seven main modes. CCT mode allows you to pick a color from a temperature range of 2800 Kelvin, which is on the warm side, all the way through to 6800 Kelvin, which is a cool blue light. I usually set my LED lights in the studio here to 5100 Kelvin, and that works well for my studio situation, but anywhere from 5000 to 5600 is considered daylight, and that will work great for most people getting started. Additionally, you can change the brightness from 0%, which is off, in 1% increments, all the way through to 100% brightness. This is a much faster process on the app than on the dials of the back of the light, but both work. HSL mode is an RGB mode that allows you to easily pick a color by tapping or dragging your finger on screen. I noticed this took a moment to kick in after changing the modes to respond, but once it changed for the first time, it was then fast and responsive to any other color changes I made. You can change this mode's saturation and overall brightness by using the two sliders on the bottom or the dials on the back of the light. RGBYW allows for more critical color selections by letting you blend white back into it. If you want a really saturated color, then just use the standard RGB mode. RGBYW mode is so much easier to control on the smartphone than the back panel, so definitely download the app. XY coordinates is another color selection mode that can be used either by tapping anywhere on the XY axis or by using the sliders for more precise control. To my mind, this is exactly the same as RGB mode, just a different way of operation. Color chip is the next mode, and this is based off using classic light gels, allowing you to pre-select a color easily. This mode allows full control over the brightness by using the slider at the bottom of the app or on the back panel of the unit. Let's talk about the 26 effects built into the WP35 LED panel. These are great for special effects, lighting scenarios, short films, parties, live bands, or whatever. These modes include flash, burst, which is kind of like an explosion, camera flash, blink, 
Weld, SOS, Candlelight, which also looks quite unique. Flame, CCT loop, which isn't RGB, it just rotates between 28 and 6800 Kelvin. TV is the next one, this mimics the TV being on in the other room. We get three different fireworks options. There's also some emergency services like police, ambulance, fire truck, RGB cycle, which is the one I'm using here in the studio. This is also great for parties, romantic, two different club modes, and five various color wave options. I love using these sort of lights to create an atmosphere when recording live music with my band or producing a short film. If used correctly, you can achieve some very realistic results. Each mode has the ability to tweak settings from the speed to intensity or the overall brightness of the effect. One of the most powerful features of this light is the color picker option. This is a great mode allowing you to reference another light source or any other color in the room. You can match it at the click of a button. Here's a look at what it looks like as I move the camera around. You can see how the light changes accordingly. If you want this to be a static color, you can take a photo of the light and then pick it via the app and have it set to a single color. I was unable to get the photo button to work on the app. I don't know if this is just a bug with my version or it's a bug with all versions, but it's definitely worth mentioning. But a workaround, at least for me, was to take a photo of the light, pick it from your library, and you're done. This feature is a really powerful option if you already have a pre-existing light and you want to keep the color temperature the same. Before I give you my final thoughts, I'll switch my main studio light over from the Pixel P80 over to the Wii Light WP35. Boom. There we go, how does it compare? I'll put a comparison on screen so you can see the difference between the WP35 as my main light and my other LED panel so you get a good sense of how this is working. This light is great considering the build quality, functionality and power output, it's a bargain. This is a much easier light to work with than my GVM light which I purchased about two years or so ago and it's as good as my Pixel P80 regarding its functionality. Another big advantage that this has over the GVM light is it connects via Bluetooth. You can simply walk into the room, turn it on and off using the app once you have it powered on. You don't have to connect to its own Wi-Fi network. I always find that that just creates more problems, especially if you're at home where you already have a home Wi-Fi network and your phone continually defaults to it. So Bluetooth gets the win. While 30 watts doesn't sound like a lot, 30 watts right now is enough to light this set up appropriately how I would with my normal Pixel P80, which is awesome. I'm running the light on 30% as well, so it's not even close to 100, and it's giving me great results. If you have a studio that's say four by five meters or something much larger than this room, this is where I'd recommend getting a second one. If you're upgrading from softboxes, two of these would complete your setup. Over the last 12 months, I've really enjoyed getting away from those big clunky and old softboxes to something that's very small and modern looking. It just looks a lot better when I walk into the room. It doesn't feel as cramped being that they're as small as they are. From what I can tell looking at my reference monitors at the time of recording, this light is doing an exceptional job here in the studio. The diffusion is good and I can look in the general direction of the light without going blind. So the diffusion is definitely doing its job. Thanks for watching folks. My name's Shane. Let us know what you think of these lights and if you want to check them out, I'll link them down to Viltrox down in the description box below. Thanks again for watching. Catch you soon. See ya.